All right, let's get straight into it. C9 versus Rogue. The tiebreaker for the last spot in the knockout stage. Uh, now, if you're new to my reviews, um, I used to be a pro player. So normally the way I treat these reviews is I just treat them as if they were a scrim game, basically, because what a lot of pro players used to do, what well, they still do, of course, is when you finish scrimming, your five, six block after every game, you'll break the game down. Normally you only do it in about 10 or 15 minutes, so you only hit the important points, but that's why I guess doing reviews on YouTube is much easier because then I can just talk as much as I want about even the small things. But anyway, we'll get into draft. Leona banned away to stop MF Leona combo. TF banned away, of course, because it's a roaming mid and they don't want to give TF. TF Jace is one of the strongest things you can do right now on red or blue side on 2-3 uh, <coughs> or even 1-2. Sometimes TF Jace is really, really powerful. Yumi first pick Denial, of course, as well. Also suits the MF. These two champs are really good at the MF. Draven banned the target hands. And now here the last ban comes in. I can't remember what it was. Is it Irelia or something they ban away? Because perks... I think uh, Damwon was also banning Irelia against C9. Yeah, Irelia ban. Um, I mean, the OPs now are like MF, uh, Lee, Zin, trade-off. Then you have Ryze, uh, LeBlanc. These are kind of the OPs teams are looking at. So MF, I think, gets first pick now, which kind of makes sense. Uh, it's a denial from Hans. He was having great games on MF, especially in the tiebreaker. I think it was against FPX. He was playing MF. And MF's the kind of champ where it's like, if your team... If your team struggles on the top side, then MF also kind of covers that pretty well because she has really good base move speed. So what when MF used to be meta, I can't remember when it was, maybe it was last year or the year before, what you would do on MF is before she was this lethality beast, you would go Berserker Greaves first item and you would basically base on uh, even wave states and because of your move speed, you could run mid, gank mid or get vis vision around mid and then run back to bot by the time you catch the wave this champ had so much fucking move speed it was ridiculous and she has a similar kind of job right now but she's just a little bit more oppressive in lane if you go comet cool so mf first pick the main idea is what a lot of teams do if the enemy team gets a stronger ad on blue side the red team always tries to counter pick support um so you could pick like aphelios here and then maybe pick thresh on three if they have a good support matchup or they could counter support on three with something like brahm into leona or brahm into any engaged support that could be picked on two three but what rogue do is they go rise rakan i believe now tf's down and they probably want to deny rise from perks and they thought that they had a good idea of just picking a roaming mid right to facilitate side lanes mm, the only problem is lee and leblanc is up so i think the rakan pick is a bit confusing to me. I feel like if you go Rise Lee Sin, that's probably better. But maybe they just wanted to take Rakan away because now they banned two supports and the enemy team has MF. They want to take away a strong support. The good thing with Rakan is this champ is really fucking flexible, right? You can pick Rakan with Esriel. You can pick Rakan with Kaisa. You can pick Rakan with Zaya. You can pick Rakan with Jin. You can pick Rakan with MF. Like you can play Rakan with every champ in the game. Only thing is, it struggles into engage supports. Like any aftershock support kind of counters Rakan in lane. The reason Rakan loses to engage supports in lane is like if I'm Rakan and I dash in and get a W, a lot of engage supports first of all can stop me, right? Alistar, Nort, uh, Leona. These champs can insta CC me the second I go in and proc aftershock. So enemy support, uh, I, the Rakan is squishier than the aftershock support. So in quick trades. Rakan always loses. Rakan is really good against champs that don't have lockdown, right? Um, like like uh, Braum. Rakan is notoriously good into Braum because he just can't do shit to him. Uh, Pike as well. These are the kind of matchups Rakan are good into. He's good into anything without like no lockdown aftershock CC. Well, LeBlanc gets picked up. And now here, I think they make a blunder. Bit of a mistake, I think, to pick Jin. The reason is, just because I talked about, there's four or five AD carries they can pick in bot lane right now. It's not really handsome as comfort, and this champ doesn't have that much playmaking, right? So I think if they want to pick, what you'll see later on is they want to pick Jace, is they should pick Jace here. Or they should pick Kennen here. They have two really good top lane picks that they can pick right here, and they can ban out two, right? Let's say the Jace example. We pick Jace on three, we ban away Malphite Wukong. Right, we got a good top matchup. We got a, we got a rise, and we can move towards the top. We want to pick Kennen, which is Odo special. We can ban away Camille, and we can ban away Jace. So now we have a good top matchup, guaranteed, right? I feel like they weren't really using red side to its strength. All they were doing is matching AD, which doesn't really do much, right? The enemy team has basically called a bluff and said, look, we've picked AD in jungle and you've got support in mid. So you're picking one of them. And what do you do? You don't pick either of them. You just pick top. So you actually get the one up on them, right? So you can actually deny something from them. And instead, what ends up happening is they pick Jin, and then they just tu tunnel vision on support bans even more. They ban a Mumu MF. They ban Rel MF. So now there's four support bans, right? One, two, three, four. But in the first place, you br you blind pick support anyway. And there's still Nautilus, Alistar, 
as the uh, Aftershock supports up, so you're not really getting like an incredibly good matchup out of bots for this, I feel like. Now they ban Cannon, and now Rogue think Blinding Top is the answer, which again, I can kind of see why they're picking Jace here, because Odo Amne probably doesn't play Wukong, and Malphite is really bad into LeBlanc, so they probably think that picking Jace is the best to deny it from C9, because if they get Jace here, and Alistar or whatever, then they have winning mid jungle, because jungle has the last pick and got banned out. Uh, they have winning top jungle, they have winning top, and they have winning bot because they blinded Rakan, right? So Jay's pick here is a must, kind of, for, for Rogue. But what's covering it? You have Irelia ban. Jay's counters cannon. So now what? Yeah, it's just a free Wukong pick. Uh, you, know, you know this Wukong pick is absolutely giga brain as well. Not even giga brain, because it's kind of obvious that this, this matchup's good. But even if Rogue could play Wukong, let's say, right? Wukong into Lee Sin LeBlanc is not great. Like, Wukong is good into a mobile champs and short range champs. What is Rogue's comp? Immobile, short range champs, unless you're Jin ulting, right? And if you're not Jin ulting, you're one shotted. Um, yeah, so all these three champs are immobile, really easy to get on, and short range if they're not poking. When they're like kind of in a, in a team fight, and they have Alistar, Wukong, LeBlanc. It's it's so hard to play team fights, so fucking hard to play team fights. And they last pick jungle, and their last pick jungle has, I hate to say it, but this champ has no value whatsoever in this draft. The reason this champ has no value is Olaf is good into what on their team. It's good into their bot lane. That's it. Olaf is good into a Mephalistar, right? You have true damage for Alistar or whatever. He can't combo you, and you can run down a Meph if she has no flash. Cool. Olaf into Lee Sin. This matchup is not good for Olaf. Olaf farms faster, but Lee Sin can actually outplay Olaf pretty easily. And um, in 2v2s, Lee Sin is better at 6. Because he has more burst, and he can kite Olaf pretty easily. What else can kite Olaf? LeBlanc. Olaf is really bad into Lee Sin LeBlanc. Level 1 to 6, he can't do shit, because he can get kited by LeBlanc. After 6, he gets one shot. He's really good into MF, and really good into Alistar, but for mid-jungle, it's not good. So Rogue has a really strong top laner, but they don't have much to cover it with. Apart from early game, right? Olaf's really good at controlling vision. If you have mid pushed in and Olaf can walk up and down the river, then Lee Sin can't really do much. But if your mid laner dies once and loses his flash, which Lee Sin LeBlanc can easily do, um, and Ryze has to lose flash, then he has to give up the push and he has to sit under his tower. And if Ryze has to sit under his tower, then uh, yeah, not only is Jace exposed, but Olaf kind of struggles a bit. Um, so a lot of things I didn't like from, didn't like from this draft. Bad top matchup. I won't say bad jungle matchup, because they're probably forced to pick jungle on 4-5 anyway. But maybe there was a better jungle pick. AD pick was really off as well. They could have gotten a much better much better draft out of this, I think. So Perks actually walks up here and puts a ward in top brush. And bases for sweeper, I'm guessing. Yeah, bases for sweeper. Cool. Alistar also did the same. Vulcan, two level one wards and basing for sweeper. Interesting. Well, they can use that sweeper. I mean, uh, Vulcan can use a sweeper in early lane and bot. Uh, to make sure that the enemy team doesn't get bush control. And maybe what perks can do with the sweeper. I guess their logic is Ryze pushes LeBlanc early. So when he pushes the first two waves, it's very common for mid lane to walk and ward Raptors. Um, so maybe he can just, after catching mid wave, sweep it. Probably my thought process there. Or he can help his team set up for ganks pretty easily. Alright, another thing I was a little bit unsure of is Inspired starting topside. We'll see what he does. Obviously, I have watched this game. But I was watching this game more of like a... Yeah, let's go rogue rather than actually like watching the um, analysis side of things. So now this is the first time I'm actually like stopping and breaking it down. Um, so both jungles clearing bot side. Cool. So the way this top matchup works is at six, Jace can die. Early, early game, like Jace wins this matchup pretty hard. Okay, so Perk's actually getting early mid push. Olaf does three camps top. You see how inspired it Raptors to red, uh, Raptors to Krugs, then to red. It means that his, um, his red buff will be up for longer when he moves the bot side. So his clear is faster, right? And he has more skirmishing potential if uh, if he finds Lee Sin. Bojang is full clearing down. Looks like Rogue have two pushing sides right now, which is great. Rakan is getting early push into Alistar. Alistar is really, leak, really weak. Level 1 to 3, this champ is really weak. It gets really hard abused. Okay, Inspired is a full clear. He's level 4 to meet Blabber on this crab. But Blabber is going to get the crab in time. So small mistiming there from Inspired. Because now it's really awkward. Because he has to run to top grab. But he has top push. Lee Sin is matching. But Perks has mid push. This is where you'll see uh, Perks can just zone him away. Like, what can Olaf do to, to LeBlanc? If this was any other mid laner, Olaf could just walk up and fuck that mid laner up. He could just walk in a straight line and kill him, but it's LeBlanc. Like, if it was Rai, Zoe, TF, this guy was dead, right? Or he has to flash. But it's it's LeBlanc. It's just annoying. He walks through and gets hit by a chain lease in Q that Olaf is dead. Oh, maybe he can get this one. Yeah, he gets it. Nice. Ooh, a little small thing there. Small thing. Nothing to read into too much, but. Inspired sees the crab, 
sitting at 300 HP running towards him. He knows Blabber doesn't have smite. He knows, and he does. He could have smited it, but he saves it. We'll see what he can do with it. But he saves the smite. I guess now that when he goes to Raptors, his Raptors are small, a little bit faster, but nothing, nothing huge. Larson pushing the wave in because he wants the base. Perks can't freeze this. The wave's too big. Larson will just walk at him and hit him. Make sure it crashes. Okay, Larson just puts a wall and stays an extra wave because Perks is slow on mana. Actually, Alistar is running phase rush, but I think there's still the same concept applies of like when Rakan jumps onto um, MF, what he can do is he can just knock away Jin and then knock up the Rakan when he ease back. Or he can just run and knock up the Rakan and they can kill him, right? They have a couple options. But this is notoriously why Rakan kind of struggles into engage supports. It's not struggles to a point where like the lane is lost, but the trades are very hard. Um, you still have good uh, team fight, you still have good gank setup. Uh, you still have good um, weak side potential, right? Where you can just kind of sit on your tower and kind of outplay on waves because you have good mobility. In straight 2v2, it's a bit difficult. Cool, Trimby's first to base. Vulcan actually matched it pretty well. Vulcan didn't base yet, but he was actually matching Krimri's roam. Cool. Jungle support mid is really important in this meta. I mean, you can see it right here. What is everyone doing, right? Mid's contesting the push. Basically, this is like this whole this whole concept of 3 3, three mid jungle support is basically Rift Heralds on upright. You'll see this at eight minutes towards the top side. But because there's no Herald and everyone's playing for bot push right now because both junglers path bot, it's just a 3v3. If they weren't here, this guy has to give up the push, which means LeBlanc can push, right? If they weren't here, then Larson can keep him on the tower. They can move in further and then they can move down together and dive bot. But because they meet each other in the middle, no one can get anything. You know, what they're contesting is this, these two bushes, right? If, if Vulcan and Blabber can win 2v2 against enemy jungle support, they can push them out, which means Larson's pushed out, which means now C9 can control kind of this part of the river, right? In uh, XL, we called it the Dorito. Every team has different names for it. We call it the Dorito. Right? <laughs> it looks like a Dorito, all right? Uh, if you can control this and this, then that basically means you can control this. And if you can control this, then that means you can control bot waves and mid waves. Because what can happen is your support can push in bot with your AD, run up the river, hover around your, AD, your mid laner, just like Vulcan just did, right? Like this. He didn't base, of course, Shrimp just ran from base. And then you can make sure your mid laner gets the push, and then your mid laner can run down, and then you can get the next bot push wave. And it's like a ping pong game where you're just moving up and down between the lanes, and you keep the push, which gives you good Drake timings and better base timings, right? Uh, so that's why everyone controls these two bushes the most, or tries to at least. See, Trimby has control of this bush and this bush right now because he's here, and that's why he tries to go for this bush. Remember I was talking about the triangle here? Uh, there's two triangles. This is the first one, and then um, this is kind of like the second one. How would I draw it? Yeah, like this. If you get the control of this, then GG. GG bot lane, GG mid. The Vulcan needs to make sure he's here to contest. Obviously, Perk's on the tower, so Larson can match first, which means they have to give up until Perk catches the wave. But it's a lot of back and forth between the teams. Like base timings, contesting. You see how I were talking about earlier about MF move speed? Yeah, look who's fucking here. MF, this guy is so fucking fast. Now they can control the triangle. Push out Rogue. And now this gives them good Drake timings and good pushing timings, right? Now, because now uh, perks can push mid. You can see how Larson had perks on the tower. Now Larson is actually the one who has to sit back. And they can control the vision. They can control the wave because they're first to play. And now Bot can start to push back as well. Because... Excuse me. They push Rogue out and they have vision of the jungler. Cool. This is basically the concept of the idea of moving towards mid. Mid controls the game. Vulcan's actually dropping bot waves now. Running top. Rogue has a stronger top side 3v3 because they have Jace. Um, Jace can always be there first, but now Jace is level 6 and so is Wukong. So now after this kind of blue buff, threaten we'll call it, it's really hard for Rogue. Wukong is really hard to kill. These two champs are both AD champs into a Wukong with insane armor. And he still has flash. Um, so that the setup is really not there. There's no real CC. The only way they can do it is getting Larson top. But now because they've lost their vision. And Perks has blue buff. And he doesn't know where enemy jungle is. <laughs> he can't walk up. So it's rough. The next play for Rogue is like the Herald timing. Which is why Trimmy is already running out of base towards top side. Vulcan is actually doing something interesting. He has Moby boots. <laughs> and he never really walks from base to mid. He just kind of walks bot, gets the push and then runs mid. But yeah, here you can see it again. Both supports contesting the triangle, we'll call it. Trying to get vision around it so they can spot out the enemy jungle. It's all like a game of who can be here first, right? Uh, like, let, let's go back one second just so you guys can understand this concept better. How important is having vision right now? It's very important, but Inspired has three camps up, right? Is it good for Inspired to just run like this just to make sure they get this right now? No. Larson's fine on the wave. There's no real pressure there. Enemy MF is basing. Drake's up, yes, but no one can really do it. 
So what is the value of the triangle right now? Ah, it's not that high. So it's better for Inspire to just full clear and then move to with his support afterwards. Because there's no pressure points on the map right now. It's not like C9 are pushing mid quickly and running to Herald and they have to match it. Or they're threatening a bot stack and we need to get the control now. You know, support can go alone. There's really not much to do. Let Olaf full clear and then do it, right? He can do it alone. He can chill out. Rakan has good mobility. Okay, perks. Kind of grieved that a bit. Kind of grieved that a bit. Maybe he didn't have W. Yeah, he didn't have W. Could have gone towards the tower, but still. So it, Trimby drops Ignite on him to get vision, right? Ignite gives vision, so he wants to make sure he sees him the whole play. Tries to TP out, but Trimby has W up again. Boom. First blood to Rogue is great. Uh, Otto Amne actually respects support roam to top because you could see if... Maybe you didn't notice it there, but what is Vulcan doing? Is Vulcan running mid to help perks? No, he's not. What he's going to do is try and make a play while the enemy team is making a play. He can't defend this. Vulcan being here won't change shit. So what is he doing? He's sprinting top on the off screen to try and kill, um, kill Otto. Gets his flash. Otto lives. But Rogue gets first blood. Cool. You can see how it's just... If you, <laughs> if you actually just watch here... Both AD carries will just be farming for the next, like, five minutes of the game, doing nothing. Inspired starts up Herald because enemy mid's dead. Perks has no TP. Larson's preemptively basing right now, or he was trying to, in case a fight kicks off because then he can TP back. Ah. Yeah, so the thing is, the problem Rogue do here is they think the objective is free, right? Larson wants to base and has TP to match any play because his items are pretty bad right now. Trimby's basing because there's a pink here and midwave's not really in, in a position to contest. They think the objective's free. But Blabber is just kind of... Fanatic like to call this sniffing. You know, he's sniffing sniffing around, see if there's anything up. He walks up. He's like, guys, this guy is on Herald alone. If Trimby stayed, could they have do much? Probably not because uh, Wukong's first. And Alistar's there, so it's like a 4v2. Uh, so yeah, I think Inspired kind of dies here. Sloppy from Rogue. How could they do this better? I need to make sure this objective is guaranteed. See how Trimby runs mid with Larson to help him push out the wave. This is good already. But now Larson should not be basing. He should be running here and helping Inspired with the Herald. Plate is fine, but he should walk up and help. He should walk and help right now. What he's doing is he's... Basically what Larson is doing here is he's giving enemy team free information. How is he giving them free information? Well, if he ran here and was hitting the Herald, he would not be on vision. But because he runs to the middle of the lane and starts recalling, watch what Vulcan does. He will walk up and he'll start to ping him. Watch. Ping. Rice is there and he's back off here. And the only way Rice can now get this Herald is if he goes like this. Right? So yeah, that's fucked. So Vulcan knows, like, wait guys, this Rice is uh, he's in Africa, man. Just fucking kill them. What are they doing? Yeah, big blunder there from Rogue. That should have been a free objective. Cool. Yeah, both ADs farming bot. Larson gets caught, he has no flash, he TP'd back. No, he didn't TP back, he ran back because the play was dead, right? Dead play. There's nothing to do. What I mean by dead players, there's nothing to do on the map, right? Look at Larson's team. Be being on this midwave does nothing. So he runs back to the lane. Blabber stays after taking Herald. Runs to take Raptors. And then sees there's a free kill here. Yeah, Lisa and LeBlanc setup is pretty insane. Lisa and LeBlanc have great setup. So Chimbi was looking for a play top with Odo. Nothing actually happens. What Rogue could have done is just cross map bot side. Where... Um, Maybe they could just have Trimby run bot and actually look to pressure something towards bot. But I guess if AD is basing then, and mid is in base too, then the only real play is top for Trimby. Otherwise, he's walking around like doing nothing. He could have ran mid to cover mid, but he wouldn't change anything in this play. Gets nothing out of top, but Otto gets the push. Vulcan has to base as well. Blabber has to clear his camps. So now the game's back into like a, a slow state. But now Larson TP is back because, yeah, there's a wave there. He needs to catch that fucking wave and his team's actually on the map so they can do something. Break still up. Could be a good objective for both teams, but it's quite late, Drake, actually. It's almost 12 minutes in and no one's on Drake. Okay, supports are finally back bot. Welcome back, guys. We miss you. Uh, TP situation is always something you have to take into account, right? There's no TPs. TP situation is even. Uh, obviously, teams will time TP, you know, like 11, 30 all the time, right? They'll always time TPs. So they should know all TPs are down. Perks has mid push right now, and you can see Trimby and Vulcan are leaving bot. Herald is up, so what is the play? C9 are here to match the Herald, and our Rogue are here to make the play happen, the Herald play. And also you can weigh up options, right? What is Rogue's realistic Herald options? Well, they'll only realistically Herald on a side where they have vision and they have the push. So right now, as long as they match mid, they can always move the sides easy, right? There's no way they can Herald top, and there's no way they can Herald bot right now. So the only place to go is mid to make sure they keep the push. Remember how we talked about triangles in River? All the shit. This is a circle, but yeah, you know, you get what I mean. Whoever gets the mid push can go to the river first, right? That's just that's just standard League of Legends. That's why everyone does N NARMs, right? 
Vulcan griefs it here. Dies. Good match by um, Inspired and Trimby. Kick from Blabber was not bad. He won for once it though. Uh, this Rakan should die here, by the way. But he doesn't. He does not die. But again, Sven is first mid wave. You see that? How fucking fast MF is at a base. Guy is a race car. Look at him. Look at MF. Brrr, straight to mid. And it's on the play. Where's Hans? He's only in bot. His champ is 10 times slower. So MF does enable your team a lot to kind of play around mid a lot easier because you have the cheat code of the fucking speed buff.exe. And then he will be able to run back to bot and catch bot wave in time. Look, he loses nothing on the wave. C9 have good good kill setup with mid jungle and rogue's comp. You see how every single time these plays happen in mid, it's rogue responding to what C9 do. Yeah, that's basically all they can do, right? Yes, you have a level 6 Rakan, but into LeBlanc, you can't touch that guy. So it's all about Lee Sin LeBlanc. Who's the immobile play? Who's the most immobile of these three of these three champs? And these three champs. It's fucking Rise, isn't it? But who's the one that's gonna die the most when they're playing through mid? It's fucking Rise, isn't it? So who do we have to cover? It's fucking Rise, isn't it? They can't walk up to the Blanc and EW him if they have. Uh, unless if Olaf's in range, there's no gap close. Rakan could be around, but they don't have damage. So yeah, C9 have a much easier job of killing the Rise than um than Rogue do of killing the LeBlanc, of course. So that's why it feels like C9 can just have easier ways into mid. Cool. Fajoling top. Yeah, Wukong has good kill pressure. Especially it's one item. Really good kill pressure. Run, Nodo. Yeah, perks. Double agent perks right there. Double fucking agent perks. He's out. He's fine. He has his ult there. Apparently what he tried to do is you the control is cloned to hit inspired or something. Just for memes. But his memes, he accidentally pressed R again. Um... I wonder if he was trying to press R to control the clone, like old LeBlanc or something. And then he misclicked and he starts laughing. He smile. And he fucking entered it. And he just gave a shutdown over to Rogue. And then, yeah, the map falls apart. Because Odo lives top, they kill perks, which means Larsen can start hitting mid-tower. Jungle support can ignore mid and start to run top. And then Fudge has to back off, right? So now the whole top side of the map just died because perks died. Meanwhile, in bot, fuck all's been happening, right? Ven made it to mid twice on time. Uh, but they're still completely even because of MF move speed. Game's in an even state-ish, but Rogue just have it way harder. Perks TP is top and redeems himself, kills Odo, good ward there. They're gonna get top tier one, so what's Rogue's play? Well, the jungle support was trying to cover, so now they need to run towards bot and try to get Drake because they can't enter top, right? You see how Rogue reactively tried to defend the play? The play has failed on the defense. So what's the next play? Well, the defense is dead. The next play is offense, right? Run to the opposite side of the map. Because the only way C9 can respond is by matching them. And if they match them, they can't pressure here and they can't take deep vision. So it's likely C9 will stay around topside. And then they can get some kind of Drake and bot tier 1 to cross map trade. You could say like, but Kajo, why don't, why don't they just run through the whole map to defend? It's not worth it. It really isn't worth it. It's better to push out top. It's better to push out mid. It's better to take jungle camps. It's better to set up vision. Actually have something on top of your play rather than just trying to make a play and then stop there at their play, right? League is like chess kind of. You have turns, and you can tell how many turns you have by how much tempo you have on the map. And tempo is decided by a lot of things, right? If you have vision set up, base timers, are they dead? You know, do you have Nash? All these things. Um, and you can tell how many turns you have, right? So C9 use their turn, for example, right now, let's say, on Herald. Well, I'll try to make a good example of a turn play here, when someone makes a play, right? So Vulcan just did his turn, right? So good example right here. Larsen and Trim being inspired want to pressure perks and push him out, but they don't know where Vulcan and Blabber are, right? So you can see they're a little bit hesitant here, walking back and forth. Watch, watch the top side of the map when Vulcan shows mid. He uses, let's say, his individual turn, not as a team, but his turn. He goes mid, does nothing. Now look at Rogue's pings. Ping, 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 ping. Now they can do something. Support's turn went mid, now that means Trimby can be first to top. Maybe we can contest top wave. Nope, nothing happens. That was a miniature turn, right? What is it? Newton's third law of motion or something? For every action, there is an equal or opposite reaction. That's basically League of Legends. If you make a play, I make a play. Or I make a cross map, or I make a defense play, right? That's literally how League works. You have to get something for everything they do, or you have to respond to everything they choose to do, right? Otherwise, you're losing out on every single play. And that's when the game is lost. When you can't make a reaction play to defend, or you can't make a cross map, then you fucking lost the game. Larson will push out top, enemy team got top two. Cool, that, let's, let's think of that as a turn, right? Larson uses Perks uses his turn, take top tier two. Fudge uses his turn to TP top. So in turn, Odo Amne will push out bot. Um, 
Hello, Odo. Just push that wave, man. This guy's top. Larson will match. Perks is turned to base with his with his base, right? Everything's kind of matched or reacted to. Cool. So the game's very even right now. Um, the problem is C9s have better comp, much better comp. LeBlanc has no lockdown CC unless Rakan can lock him down. There's no Nautilus ult or anything he has to be scared of. Um, Olaf is kited. They're all short range into Wukong Alistar. And C9 have vision control right now. So cool. Now C9 are going to pressure bot tier 1. Rogue are playing really defensive. They keep trying to match every play C9 make. You know, they could have just ran top after pushing mid right now. And gone top and dived this Wukong and trade towers. Even though their tower is already really low, they're still trying to defend it. Cool, Drake in 50 seconds. That means there's no soul until like, what, 30, 31 minutes in the game. Yeah, this Rise is really vulnerable. The problem is, like, Rogue's comp is good on 1 3 1, right? Rise side lane, J side lane, poggers. This is really good. Problem is, they have so much kill pressure on side lane against these champs. One Alistar gank, Jace is dead. One Alistar gank, Rise is dead. One Lee Sin gank, one Lee Sin gank. Like, but the same doesn't apply to Rogue, right? Rise having his jungler top doesn't mean LeBlanc will die, it just means they get the push. Jace having his jungler bot doesn't mean Wukong will die. It just means I'll get the push. Same applies to support. C9 have so much more plays on the map just because of the way Rogue drafted. Single target damage, low CC, and very vulnerable side lanes into the enemy CC comp, right? Um, so they have to juggle a lot. And you don't want to group up that much with Jace unless he can push sides, right? If Jace can push bot into tier 2 and then run mid and you group up and poke them, fantastic. The second you start taking Jace out of a side lane because if you're scared and he has to run mid from base and stay with you, then the game is really difficult. So for now, Rogue are fine, but that's what will start to happen soon. Because this Jace never comes into the game. Like, Rogue have not played for this Jace once yet, because they have to play to protect Rise all game. Jungle support have to sit around mid. Jungle supports from C9, all they have to do is force mid, and then this guy will scale for free, and LeBlanc will always have to push. Great. But Rogue don't have great options from draft. Is it a bad draft? No. Not a bad draft. It's just against their draft, it's pretty rough. Pretty rough. Because you're on a timer to do something, but you can do less things than them. So it's really weird. You know, and finally get the spot tier one. There's not much defense left when they invest five members. MF, like I said, runs around the map. Why is Ven laning with Wukong? Because they want to get the spot tier one and they're cross mapping, but they have more tempo. You see how I mean? Tempo can also be waves, right? Why do they have more tempo? Well, bot wave is here and top wave is here. Top tower is full HP, bot tower is one HP. So if we take this and they want to cross map top, we're 10 seconds ahead of them, which means we're ahead in tempo right you see this this is a very good example of tempo right bot tower dies now by the time rise crashes top wave so now rogue have two choices you either try to defend the play and lose out because your bot tier one's dead and our top tier one lives or you try to go for our top tier one and we start to pressure more because we're ahead in tempo cool maybe nothing will come of this but sven smartly just decides to go bot because there's no point in being top because you'll get dove and they're up in tempo what does being up in tempo mean it means they can start to push you out I don't know if Sainan's going to get anything for this, but they can move mid and take this mid tier too. Cool, now let's look at the map again. Larson finally pushed out top and got him the, t the wave into tower. Now he's moving mid. So you're still up in tempo, right? He's actually dropping the top tier 1 to make sure he can defend mid, because he knows they're down in tempo. So what in turn happens at happening? Because C9's ahead in tempo, they force mid as 5 after getting a bot tier 1. Ryze has to match this play. And what ends up happening when everyone's fucked off? Well, it's a win-win. Win-win for C9. You match us mid so we don't get the objective, but we already got the objective that you wanted to get in the first place. Now, C9 are going into their 1 3 1, which is very impossible for them to catch. You just saw it right there. It doesn't matter who LeBlanc matches. If Le enemy LeBlanc can do this while support is right here and get away with it, then you know something's rough on the side lanes, right? Um, Wukong will do the exact same thing. Now, I think Perks and Fudge should swap soon. Like, Perks should probably just base and run out mid and go top and. Fudge should go towards bot soon after they push out waves because I mean actually it's not the end of the world if you leave Perk's bot he has got a lot of escape tools I mean if you think of the Rise game where he's against FPX and he got perma caught actually I'm wrong actually wrong the reason I'm wrong is because having your LeBlanc on the side you want to play for is best and there's no top tier 2 because it died so playing for bot tier 2 is easier with LeBlanc because she wins against Jace harder and you can actually siege towers because she's a range champ if they want to play for top tower, then obviously she should be up there because she can push in top, move mid, chunk out mid, and then they can come top afterwards, or vice versa. Um, whereas Wukong can't really afford that. He can only really push and look for fights. Good little 4-1 here. Teams that are ahead will always play on two lanes. Teams that are behind will always play on one lane, which in turn means if you're playing two lanes to one, you should always get advantages. 
right? Good example. Rogue's playing on one lane. Larson's playing top. He's pushing in top. What is C9 doing? They're playing on two lanes. They're pushing in bot. They're pushing in mid. They're pressuring tier two mid, pressuring tier two bot. Perks into it a bit here, but their macro was good. Macro was good. Because whatever happens as Rogue, wherever you commit numbers, you lose, right? Let's give an example. Let's say Rogue go four man bot right now. What are they losing? They're losing mid tier two and you're losing top tier one. So you're even trade if they commit numbers. If Larson TP's bot right now and you keep pushing mid, you're getting mid tier two. So you're winning on numbers. So you're either even or ahead unless they force something and you get caught. Then of course, now you can't play on two lanes. Because slowly those two towers would be chipped down and then C9 would come out ahead. But he made a mistake. Still, they'll lose, they'll lose mid tier two. But this was a big blunder by Perks because Perks dies, Sven dies. Rogue have to force Nash. Rogue have to force Nash. Have to, have to, have to force Nash. What do they need to get? They need to get TPs out of Wukong. They need to get flashes out of people. They need to force things. Honestly, I think Rogue fucked up here. Why? They should force this Nash and they should flip it. There's this concept in the LPL. Maybe it was Mac I speaking about this. Basically, there's this concept in, uh, in LPL where 50-50 Nash doesn't exist. Because if you're five men in one pit and there's a jungler, if you burst around the same time, especially with Jin, Force Shot and Smite, you probably can secure it, right? So, especially in a game state where you're the ones under your tier twos, you're the ones playing on one lane and you're the ones getting, I won't say outscaled, but pushed in in every lane and you don't have any agency in the game, forcing Nash right now is good. Why? Because there's so much standing gold on the map that you need to pick up that you've already lost, right? So you have so much gold on the map. I think they should just go for it. At worst case, enemy team steals it and you kill Alistar Lee Sin. You catch mid and bot wave and yeah, fuck, that sucks. Best case, you get Nash and get out. But the worst case is you just got two kills and nothing happened. You just got two kills and nothing happened. You lost a mid tier two for two kills. That's it. I think they could have just gone for it. They could have just gone for it. MF is never joining this fight. Now I will say this is the riskier one of the two, but I would not, I would not blame my team if they tried to flip Nash here with, um, with Jin full shot and then Rizal out. I would say that's fine. Jin full shot, Rizal out with Smite, ah, doable, doable. Anyway, they didn't do it. They backed off. Maybe they backed off because they can play for Dragon Soul. You know, Inferno Soul's pretty lit. It's up in 40 seconds. Let's all base and go to Drake and be in time. Yeah, I can see that's a good argument. So I'll say fine. If I was in the screen review for this, I'd say sure. I can see why I didn't do Nash, right? You had bad timings. Could have lost it and it's better to base and contest Dragon Soul point. Sure. So we'll ignore it. There is just a possibility of doing that, right? These two champs are very good at finishing. Olaf E smite with Rise EQ with a Jin fourth shot. I think Lee Sin has no chance, especially if Rakan W's over the wall and he feels pressure to do it. Anyway, they lost to Dragon Soul because they can't walk in. And we talked about agency. Agency right fucking here, baby. How can they stop this LeBlanc? This LeBlanc is single-handedly zoning this choke point and Wukong is single-handedly zoning this choke point. No one can walk up because of these two champs. Because nothing is threatening these two champs. Fuck is Wukong and LeBlanc scared of? He can react easily to Rakan jumping on him. Olaf has no CC. Rise is short-ranged. Jin's in Africa. And this guy's a poke champ. So what are they scared of? And by the time they get through these lines, the Drake's dead. So Inspired here was in a really awkward spot. So Inspired's gonna do something really whack where he runs like this, but he, he kind of has to. Otherwise he's dead because they're right here. Good stuff. Hans's positioning is good, obviously with his ult, but the problem is the longer the fight goes on, the worse it gets. Because of this line. Inspired runs through it, and so does C9. But now, when everyone's committing here, it's really hard for Jin to do anything. He hits Sven, doesn't do anything. And this is the problem. You're playing Rise in a choke point. Just look at Larson. Flash knock up. Knock up. Donyas. Flash away. Dead. <laughs> like this champ is too short range to be able to play fights against Alistar Wukong. If they commit flashes on him. And they should be able to commit flashes on him. Because for Rise to do damage, he has to come in close range. And then you find a fucking, fucking trigger. Vulcan does amazing here. Flash knock up on both Jace and Rise. Wukong flash E. Knock up on Rise. Jace is out the fight. The game's over. The agency Rogue's comp has is nil compared to Rogue's comp. Uh, is nil compared to C9's comp, sorry. Anyway, so yeah, they're only, what, 1k gold down? But pfft, they're really not 1k gold down. Rogue's ideal situation is getting vision first, poking them out with Jace, maybe hitting Jin W's and then engaging with Rakan. And then Ryze can maybe walk up and get in range. The, flight, the fight splits and then you can chase him down with Ryzult. That's kind of a good fight for Rogue because single target damage, low CC. For C9, if the fight's like this, <laughs> it's, it's just too messy. Wukong is really hard to target. Stopwatch, W, double knockup, flash. And that's just the Wukong, right? Let's not talk about the Alistar in my face with ult up, lock it, 
fucking LeBlanc coming from behind or the side with a chain. Lee Sin trying to kick me his hands and now there's an MF ult in my face too. As Rice, like, ha, ah, pretty rough. Rogue can only really capitalize on C9's mistakes and they have to force them into mistakes. Now I've made it sound very dire for Rogue, but you can force the enemy team to make mistakes. How? You play on that edge. There's like this edge where you play a little bit cocky, right? Where maybe Larson oversteps just a little bit to catch a wave, his team's behind him, you, you chase him down and then you re-engage, right? Those kind of cocky plays which you can make the enemy team go for, go for bait that isn't there. Right? Perk's getting greedy to try and contest his vision. Vulcan walking up a little bit there, trying to punish him, right? This is not Rogue making good plays. This is just Vulcan feeling like something needs to happen here because Perk's chunking out Trimby, right? You just you just try to bait them in a little bit. This is already really good, right? Vulcan losing ult. That's fantastic. Rogue grouped up mid while Wukong's top with no TP. This is fantastic. Now they got a tower. Cool. The Niners split up a little bit. Good. That's a small mistake punish. Now go back and catch your side waves. This is the only thing. Remember how I talked about earlier where... If your Jace has to run from base to mid, the game is already fucked. Yeah, look what this Jace did. He just ran from uh, base to mid with his team and he's grouping with Jace. If you have Zoe on your team, sure. If you have Herald and Zoe, go ahead. With Jin, I can kind of see it. But the problem is if Wukong's actually able to push out sides first and you're the one catching sides as Jace, I feel like the game's in a rough spot. But this is the only thing you can kind of do. Catching side lanes as Jace is never a good thing. You always want to be the one to push out and then move mid and do this rather than play on the back foot of doing it, being on a timer and then going back. The reason is because I'm going very high macro mode here. Hopefully it's not uh, making you guys dizzy. If I, let's imagine this is Jace. Let's imagine this is Jace, yeah? If I push top all the way to tier three and then I group, how much time do I have to be with my team? Well, a long time because the enemy top has to catch the wave, push out another two or three waves all the way to here before I have to catch it. Or if maybe even one or two waves before I have to come back here and keep the push. So I have about a minute and 30 seconds to just fuck around my team in mid and poke you on your tier three. Now let's look at it the other way around. If I'm the one that has to catch waves, you can push it in, and then I have to run back and catch it eventually, right? Um, if I'm grouping mid and I'm pushing in and you're pushing in top quick, then I'm on a timer to get to top quick, right? Does that make sense? Basically, the TLDR is Jace can decide when he wants to move first rather than being forced, right? If I'm mid and you push in top, I'm forced to go top. Whereas if you're pushed into top and pushing out, then I can decide when I want to go back top, right? Rather than being like, you need to go back and catch top wave now. It's more like, I can stay another wave. Oh, I can stay another wave. Eventually, you're going to be forced to do it because you're going to have to catch the wave very similarly, right? But if he's pushing out, I can decide, Man, maybe around here I'll catch the wave because this is our vision line and I'll push it back out. But if you want to, you can buy a little bit more time, you know? You have more, what is it, like more room to work with, if you get me. This is how you want to play Jace. This is how you want to play Jace. Whereas a champ like Malphite, opposite, right? I don't really have to catch that wave. Fuck do I care about 20 CS, man. Fucking flash ult them now. Jace can't force things. Some tanks can. Some champs can, right? Wukong can force things. So yeah, you see, he pushes out top and then groups. Jace can't really drop waves. Because the more waves you drop on Jace, the more useless you become. Your champ just falls off. And you can never contest sides. Whereas Malphite, Sion, Orn, maybe even Wukong, sometimes Camille. You can say, fuck the wave, just go engage. But Jace can't do that. Jace has to do this. And then group with his team. Cool, this is a massive catch. This catch was ginormous. What should Rogue have done with that catch? They should have gone Nash. They're griefing. Yep. They are griefing. They are griefing. What they're doing is they're fucking the whole map, actually, right now. I'll show you in a sec why they're fucking the whole map. How much time do you think Rogue have just wasted? What do they get out of this? They get onto Nash eventually, but now they're scared to finish it because Rogue, a C9 can TP in five seconds. This is another spot where you should have fucking finished it, right? Should have fucking finished it, right? Why are they griefing? Enemy mid is dead for 50 seconds and your top laner is hitting top tier 2, right? And Rice has TP. Is contesting this Drake to play? No, it's not. Not to play. What do you do? You run it down. You push this mid wave right now and then you go do Nash. Put two or three wards here and Rakan is ready to turn if they come. That's it. It's that simple. Rice just TPs now. Jace keeps hitting top and you play all for top side and you get the free Nash. C9 won't contest it. I can tell you for a fact with mid wave pushing in, Top waves pushing in and you on Nash and them seeing fuck all, they won't contest it. They will never contest it. They can't. 
They can't. And even even if you do do it, MF has to do Drake. And if Lee Sin, let's say, ran through here with no vision and face checked absolutely everything and tried to steal it against Rise right here, Rakan right here, he's dead. 100% dead. So why is what Rogue did bad? Well, first of all, they ran from here to here. We'll see it in a sec. Jace is doing his job properly. Yeah, he should push. There's no point TPing anywhere right now. So they ran all the way from mid to bot. Killed Wukong after a while. Got his GA. Now they run from bot to the top and do Nash. And by the time they do all of this, the map is now in this state where LeBlanc is alive. And now you're setting up for Nash with Wukong dead for 20 seconds. And now they're actually in a defendable spot where it's their own jungle and they have vision. So they can actually find ways to poke and prod in. Rogue should have just beelined to Baron straight away. Fuck the dragon, we can get the next one. I can see why they did it though. Dragon Soul Point, cool. Anyway, now Rogue are just playing too scared. Primby tries to flash knock up with ult, I believe. Is that ult on cooldown now? Yeah, flash knock up with ult. So now the call from probably Trimby maybe is back, back, back. No, you don't back. You flip this shit like a burger. You're too late now. You have to do it. You have to do it, but I can see why they didn't do it. Because they have no rise ult. But like, I, I really feel like you just have to force it. And just try the Jin full shot. Peck. Trimby fucks the play. I won't say fucks the play because it sounds like he made a mistake. But the play was fucked when Trimby tries to flash here and charmed perks. But the thing is, perks just W forwards, I believe. So he just jumps back. And now Trimby's wasted ult and knock up. And now, because they have nothing else, that's it. I feel like maybe if they communicated very well, they can Jace QE the Lee Sin like this and then hit a Jin W and then maybe Rakan can turn on him. But that's kind of what they did. Didn't work though. Anyway, Rogue are playing extremely scared. This, if this was an LPL team, that Baron is flipped and the game is lost or won on that spot. Because now Rogue are in a terrible spot. Because you're playing a jungler with no smite, with no, uh, with no flash into Lee Sin LeBlanc Alistar, and you're playing a poke comp that has to face check now because you just dropped all your vision. So we know how we talked about tempo. Right now, Rogue is up in tempo. Why are they up in tempo? They have vision control. They're first to play. They're able to start it. They have more members. They have tempo. What happens to their tempo? Well, it's being used right now. They're spending their tempo. This is like the fucking convenience store, and they're giving the cashier all their tempo. Now what happens? Now their tempo is spent. It's gone. Why? Because now C9 have control. They take pinks, they put wards down. Wukong's up, Wukong's TPing in, mid waves push. You see how Sven pushed out mid there? Little small thing, but it's got to push. Sven runs mid, pushes mid. Now who has tempo? C9 has tempo. So what happens is you drop the ball. Like I passed you the ball, you stood with the ball for 10 seconds looking at it. They fuck all, and then pass it back to me. And now I'm gonna throw the ball in your fucking head because I have the whole map. This top wave, useless. This bot wave, pushing. Mid wave, pushing. What's your vision right now on Nash if you're rogue? It's, uh, yeah, it's that. That's that's it. So now you're sweating. Because you have to get your Olaf in the pit now, or the Baron's gone. How do you get your Olaf in the pit? Well, use your agency. Yeah, you just walk up. Someone can walk up, right? No, no one can walk up. They have no Rakan ult, and uh, everyone's short range and squishy. And they have a Alistar in the bush with a Wukong with flash ult ready. So we're all fucking one shot. Hey, okay, well, can we split up? No, we can't. They have Lee Sin and Blanc. Well, can we just go as five? No, we can't. They have better team fight. So now you're forced to walk up. You see how Rogue are all scattered, like thinking who the fuck's going first? That's the biggest problem. No one can go first. The only one that can go first is Inspired. By the time he goes first, they get vision. He can actually find his way into the pit. Gone. So now you have to run away because there's nothing left to contest. And what happens when you run away? They chase you down. Luckily for Rogue, Larson pulls the trigger instantly. Where is he rise ulting? As soon as this fight ends... He's rise ulting here. What is he doing after that? He's clearing mid wave. He's pushing this wave for his fucking life. And he got he got all of it. One one caster creep, but the melee dies anyway. Larson saves the game because he dies in the end, right? Maybe if maybe if C9 just stayed and buffed the wave and cleared the wave and had that caster, they could end. Probably they could. If Jace dies too. But yeah, they chase they chase rise, rise die, rise dies, and uh, yeah, the wave dies. You can see it on top left, right here. Watch there. Wave's gone. So now, C9 have no waves. No wave top, no wave bot, no wave mid. So they got the ace, they got Nash, but they can't end. So good job by Larson. He kept the game going. If he didn't do that, the game was over. But he kept the game alive. But still, the agency is falling further and further and further. Rogue comp can only really punish mistakes. This kick from Blabber was really good. I'll just highlight it. I don't like talking about team fights, especially if I'm doing reviews, but yeah, really good, really good kick there.
he flash onto the hand sword. He had flash, but yeah, he's dead anyway. He tried to flash into the Lars Nolt. Why don't I like to review team fights in world reviews? Because I think team fights are individual. Um, like a lot of the team fights, if you go into scrims, are like, oh, but if you like flash knocked up this guy, then we would win the fight. And I think those my minor points are very good to talk about between players, right? I think the player should bring that up to the players. I think the coach or whoever is doing the scrim review needs to hit the, the big points, yeah? But the players know that. This is not something you highlight, teach, or tell them about. Players know that. If Larson could have flash EW'd LeBlanc because she had no dashes, you know who's saying that to him first? It's his team, not me, you know? Not the coach, not whoever it is. It's the team. So these discussions naturally presume. How to team fight is a good, good thing. And instilling like, how do we team fight? When do we team fight? Where do we team fight are good things? Um, but discussing actual team fights that happened, uh, I think a lot of the players can come to good conclusions about what they want to do. C9 do a very similar thing. Remember how they were playing on two lanes before? Now they're playing on two lanes again. Mid and top, good stuff. Perks hitting top mid inhib. And when you're playing on two lanes, you're losing because Rogue have to commit numbers to defend one side because the Baron up creeps. And when they do that, the other lane starts to fall. Looks like they're basing though. Why are they basing? Because Dragon's spawning in one minute and you need to get set up one minute before the objective. You know, they're kind of cheating because they have full vision and they can keep Rogue in their base like this. Um, but Vulcan's going to base for wards. Fudge's going to base for whatever he just bought. And they're going to walk out and set up Drake. Make sure that Rogue can't pass the line. Probably like around here. They don't want to let them pass, you know. If you think about objectives, there's a lot of lines, right? Um, there's the base gate. Then there's kind of like this choke here. After that, there's kind of like these chokes here. Um, this is very kind of not in-depth stuff, but this is kind of stuff you learn as a player. Um, if you can get pinks here, you can stop them from walking in, you know, and stop them. But you have a lot of space, so it's very dangerous, right? They can come from here. If this doesn't work, you can drop that. Move pinks to here. Stop them coming in here. The most important thing when you're doing objectives as a team is you don't let these fuckers go through these chokes. The second one team gets through a choke and five of them are here and you're standing off, now it's even. But if you have control of this, you do not let them come in. And here as well. These are the three coordinates, you, uh, three corners. You do not let them enter for your life. If anyone walks up here into these bushes and tries to contest the objective, you fuck them up. So Rogue pushed out top. So C9 just pivot and they go for mid bot waves because they're playing for Drake. Standing goal on the map, tier two. Love it. Baron's one uh, has ran out. But C9 are in a great spot. They're sitting on Dragon Soul Point. They have insanely big spikes on their team. Double GA Rabadons, stopwatch with uh, IE and Dominix, like their whole comp is spiking really hard. They have really good defensive items, really good aggressive items, all that shit. Vajo catch top wave. For now, there's nothing to really play for. Perks is just fishing for damage and you just want to keep waves pushed in. Keep waves pushed in and keep some kind of vision line. Vision line doesn't matter too much. If you have vision on one side, that's already good. So Vulcan will walk up here and put wards down, which means by process of elimination, if Rogue on top side, they're bot side. This applies the whole game of League of Legends. The most dangerous push in the game to take vision on is this one. Why? Because if their carries are here, you can't touch them. Unless you can get around here, right? A lot of, a lot of teams call this push right here the IG push. The IG push, because it's famously IG would always face check this push and die and throw games when they're ahead uh, in 2018. So yeah, if you're ever behind as a team, you always die for these two pushes. The only way you can break it is by pushing mid all the way and then going in. Uh, but in most cases, tier 2 is up, and if tier 2 is up, you can't do that. Because if tier 2 is up, you can't walk like this. It just doesn't happen. You can't go like this when this is up. You'll just die. Anyway, Baron's up. Cloud9 are in no rush. They have Dragon Soul Point. They have both side lanes pushing soon. And Rogue will be the ones who have to answer. Good thing for C9 is when they push in waves, they can just start the objective because they have a no flash jungler. See how they keep going back to mid wave and pushing it in, and bot wave and pushing it in. Eventually, they'll go to top wave, which I think is pushing anyway. They'll keep the waves pushing in. And when they see hands showing on the wave like this, they'll start Nash. See that? And then what happens to hands when he wants to join? He gets followed by creeps. What happens when he gets followed by creeps? They have full vision on him. And now they know exactly where all of Rogue are. So Perks can jump forward and start to chunk them. And Inspire has no flash. So C9 know if you want to contest this Nash, you have to come through here. And what happens when you come through here? They will stop you. And they'll stop you. Same as the Drake. These two corridors, you're not allowed in. No. The second you enter, you're dead. The Vulcan flashes in and he dies. But C9 have good position so they can start getting the fight. They overchase a bit and Rogue actually win it. Idea was good from Vulcan, but he choked his combo a bit. The concept is good. The macro decision is good. But I think he was looking for more here. 
And I also think he's not looking at the right targets. He W flashes onto Jace Rakan when his team's a little bit far. I think he should have maybe waited here a little bit longer for them to walk up to about here and then gone. So his team can follow. But MF ult range is not following that very well. See that? MF ult. Ah, Rakan can have dash out. Not doing much. So, concept was good. Idea was good. Just team too far away. Turn needs to be more decided. More decisive. Needs to be quick. You die, lose GA. Terrible spot. What the rogue need to do? Push mid. What do they need to do? They need to do Nash. 100%. They also have a lot of gold to collect. Remember how we talked about C9 were pushing sidewaves? Ooh, a lot of gold for a rogue to collect. Good thing is rogues not on a they're not rushed, you know? There's 50 seconds. But this should be free. This one is free real estate. They got this one, right? They must get this one. Yeah. Cool. Now, again, one minute until Drake. What's everyone thinking about? That motherfucking dragon. Rogue need to make sure that they can get the Snash base and get those vision lines cleared before C9 can get a setup. Rogue did get it. They pushed them out. They're here. Love it. Free Drake. They pushed them out. Now they have their own vision lines. Yeah? See that? That's a free Drake. Boom. Both teams on Dragon Soul Point. Both teams even. Who has better team fight? C9. Who has got actually some map control now? Rogue. They have some kind of map control, which is good. Seems hard to push because you can get, get fucked from so many angles with their comp and they can't stop it. LeBlanc, Lee Sin. These champs are so annoying. If you have point and click CC, these champs are not as annoying. But Rogue doesn't really have that much point and click CC. There's buffers on their CC. You know, Rakan RW, uh, Rise EW, Jin W. There's buffers on their lockdown. So it means perks can play on... Like, he can jump forwards and knows his limits really well. Uh, so it's really hard to punish, walk up, stop this MF from doing anything. Everyone's short-ranged, you know. It's not like I can walk up this t MF and just Leona ult her from max range, force her cleanse, and then do it again in a minute's time. There's no, like, force tools right now. The only thing they can do is group up and poke. And then when they come into them, they can start to do damage. But if they're going to chokes, they'll start to get shredded. Yeah, Rogue just perma-grouping. Perk's doing his job of poking. Inspired has decent lifesteal on jungle camps. Ooh, you can see Blabber went for a kick there. I think he fucked his combo up a little bit, but it's whatever. I think if he did get the kick off, he'd die, but he has GA. Q, what does he do? Q. Then he gets knocked back. He tried to war jump. I think he got knocked by Jace. So then he ends up just kicking Larson away. TP from comes in from Fudge. So C9 have to go forwards now because this guy is alone otherwise. This was actually not bad from Rogue because this guy's GA is proc'd instant. Perks almost solo carries the game here. Hans is a very lucky boy. If Perks did his combo a little bit better here, Hans was dead. If Perks did W forwards, walk into bush. If he did QR, Q, QRE, this guy's one shot. But he, uh, it's very fast paced right in the moment. 45 minutes in, you have like a super play. Maybe he thought dash QE was enough. Okay, Drake in 48. Everyone's spacing one minute before. Vulcan's looking for some kind of flank. Perks is going to TP in soon. Bot wave's pushing. They have to deal with this. Rogue trying to break the vision lines. You see it right there. You see what exactly what um, they're doing. They're looking for people. You saw how Hans was Wing bushes, Inspired's warding bushes. They're looking for people. The thing is, at this late in the game, you have to make sure you catch bot. You have to make sure you push out mid because the thing is what C9 could do is they could run in here and as long as you're... If you're five man stacking here, ready to make a pick, they could just poke you with a spell, realize five man's here and then run mid and end and stop your bases. So you have to be very, very careful. You have to show on midwaves, you have to catch midwaves. See how Perks and Fudge were like ready, waiting in case they saw a five man rogue here. But the game's over then, isn't it? They're just gonna end. And they pushed them in. Good stuff. Now Rogue has to face check. And what happens when they face check and they move past these lines? We stop them. This was really good by Perks. This vision this vision here was so good. This blue orb actually is a game changer. One pops auto. And now it's a 4v5 from the start and Rogue already split. Really hard to find anything now. Because you just lost the Drake. Can you go Nash? Nope. Found anything. Perks actually just solo carried the game there with that kill. Infernal soul for C9. Oh, it's rough. And they're going to force Nash too. 30 seconds on Odo. Yeah, Rogue can't really do shit here. What do you want them to do? I've said it a thousand times about their agency and what they can do on face checks. There's none of it. This Jin shot. I paused it on a good frame. That almost stole Nash. If that stole Nash... That would have prolonged the game maybe to an Elder. Well, this game does go to an Elder, but you know, like prolonged it to a point where Rogue actually can have some map control for the Elder, right? Anyway, let's skip forwards a bit because there's nothing to do. 
They don't have Nash and they want to start sieging and that's what they do. Siege comes in exactly the same as the top mid siege earlier on, but now it's a mid bot siege. Auto lives with the MF ult. They lose bot inib, they lose mid inib. Not the end of the world. Losing inibs at 50 minutes. 50 minutes just means the uh, back doors are annoying and you can't push the waves as easy, but you're, you're all six items. These waves are one shot anyway. So it's not like you're pressured by the inib, it's just really annoying. And then of course they're going for three inibs. Jesus. Then gets caught, big mistake. Gets Gale Force into Jin W. But again, Rogue keep getting picks, but what the fuck can they do with these picks, right? They got a kill. Cool, they stopped the siege. Can they do anything? No. Can they force anything on the map? No. Have they are they gonna outscale in any way? No. There's not much to be done on the map. They're just Yeah, look, they can't leave their base. Can't leave base. Looking for some vision in their own jungle. That's it. That's sweeped away. Done. 50 seconds on Dragon. They're being pressured on the top inib. Fudge is doing good. Keep th three waves pushed in. Keep Rogue in their base. And then we can just beeline to the Drake afterwards. You see how C9 are not just sitting. 15 seconds, 20 seconds before Drake spawn. They're not just sitting here. Why? They want to push Rogue into the base. Push the waves in and then run themselves and do it. And if Rogue want to chase them, then they stop them. Right? Remember how we talked about those vision lines, right? Well, the fucking line's here now. And they're not allowed to pass it. Perks can even stay here if he wants. And the four man can go. Now, see how they're going to Drake? Now Rogue's chasing them. How does Rogue face check a Wukong, an Alistar, a LeBlanc? They can't, so they have to go through mid. A lot of teams, if they want to contest an objective quickly, they have to go through a lane, right? Most common times you'll see this is when Baron is started. You'll see teams go through mid to, to Nash. And the second most common one, I think, is when the team is behind and the enemy team pushes mid and goes to Drake. The enemy team's response is to push bot and go to Drake. And then there's a standoff of teams. Because no one wants to face check. This was respectable. This was respectable, but it was just really int. Rise ulting, they, they have to rise ult in. Why? Because dragons, they don't know how how HP the dragon has. And they're going to take about 30 seconds to get there in the first place. Vulcan could have got a 5-man knockup. 4, because Olaf had ulted. But he doesn't. So that's really hurt. But he knocks Inspired into his team. Odo Ramne is HP. <laughs> that's one perks W, I think. Or park perks R. He's fucking useless. He dies instantly. Fudge is unkillable. Too much single target damage. Jin can't do anything to their HP bars. They have Infernal Soul. Game is over. Wow. Great game. Um, a lot of back and forth. Um, I hope you guys learned something from the game. Uh, I think I went over a lot of concepts quite rapidly. So if there's anything you want me to talk about in the comments or on stream next time around, let me know. Uh, also, let me know if you enjoyed the video. Um, this is an off stream review because right now Worlds is going on, I think, and there's just 24 hour rule or whatever. Anyway, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed the review. Congrats to C9. Um, world's going to be fun. I'll be casting and uh, being on the desk. So I'll see you guys there. Peace or on the stream. Twitch.tv slash schedule. That's fucking right.